time is, in a sense, almost running more quickly right now. That thinking is not something that is easily available or accessible because of climate, because of politics. Where can we pause? Kathy Halstead, you are an abstract artist, you are a philanthropist, and you are a co-founder of Tippett Rise Art Center. And you are here talking to us and helping us think about the relevance of place. And it is such a privilege to have well, you. It's amazing to be here with you, Sean. <laughs> Part of what we're doing, as you well know throughout this series, is inviting people to reflect a little more deeply about ethical issues, aesthetic issues, geologic issues about what it means for Tippett Rise to be here in this place. How are you thinking about that now? I think there's so many, you know, kind of beautiful questions in that question. One of the things I think that we've thought from our first moments on this land is not only its long history, but in a sense its resonance with the people both here now and the people who lived here for so many centuries before. Tippet Rise sits within the traditional sacred land of the Apsalika people and of other indigenous people who lived and communed within these rolling hills and valleys. We all want to be committed to respectfully and thoughtfully work with Native leaders, artists, musicians, poets, and students whose ancestors lived on this land, and we want to support and acknowledge their communities and their perspectives. And I think that leads us into a really rich possibility of working with new friends who are so close to this land and so anciently close to this land. And what can we do to help them honor those connections that they have so historically um, held but have not had that opportunity to really exercise? Absolutely. Love that. You also include ancestors that include artists and musicians and sort of to acknowledge that the first artists here did not just come here in the 21st century, that part of the history of those many tribes also has to do with what they've contributed culturally uh, and that that might be also what you're carrying forward. When we were thinking about place and thinking about the ethics of place and the aesthetics of place and thinking about a title for this series, I remember being on the phone with you when you brought up the word relevance. And we suddenly realized that that was what this series was going to be called, Relevance of Place. And so now, what associations come forward for you around that word, relevance? It's really interesting because I think at that moment, I had a sense of could Tibet Rise happen in this way anywhere else? Or could it only happen here in this way? And I think I, I definitely felt, and I do still, that this land, this sky, you know, has created what is Tibet Rise. We are so incredibly fortunate to be in this particular place that feels safe, it feels beautiful, it feels encompassing and embracing. It feels that it makes a connection between earth and sky, that it brings us into a scale that is both intimate and monumental, that is both immediate and long when we see the world is in more turmoil and so many people are losing what would have been their place in the world and what can we do to in some way prevent some of the cruel displacement that is happening today. 
And meet the moment, you could say. Exactly, <laughs> meet, meet the this moment. moment. If we look beyond, you know, whatever it is that we might be thinking we've just learned from the news uh -huh. and really see each other as humans and see each other as part of this place and see each other as people who can meet the challenges of today and the future together, I think, you know, we can, we can have some chance of getting there. Mm -hmm. Creating different conditions mm -hmm. to come together to open up to that that possibility that yeah. it, we don't have a lot of spaces to do that right no, now. So. No. As it turns out, the moment is always changing, mm -hmm. um, but it's still an informed about um, a history of many moments. We're also asking artists and designers to add another keyword into our mix. People have been bringing up other, other words that define their practice or define some aspect of how they work in the world. I wonder if you want to throw out... You know, there's <laughs> many, many words that animate your life, but is there another key term you'd like to throw out? You know, I had many ideas about that, but now when you say it right at this exact moment, this moment, I actually want to share the word love. It's really that sense of loving our earth that we have lost and loving our fellow humans that we have lost. So many of the challenges that we're facing, that our children will face, that our grandchildren will face, is this disconnect, is this displacement. I mean, what a big word to choose. <laughs> and a word that, you know, some could say, and this is, I think, to your point, some might say, oh, naive, mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, we need to, we need to be more, um, sus you know, suspicious, doubtful, careful before we go into language like that. And instead to say, no, actually, <laughs> being cut off um, politically, environmentally, um, interpersonally to that kind of emotion is core to some of the problems that have unfolded in the world and core to what it means to repair them. So I love that you, I love that you brought love. <laughs> I didn't know that was what you're going to do. <laughs> Full of surprises, Kathy Halstead. <laughs> actually, you're echoing in so many ways many aspects of the mission statement of Tippett Rise. But I just wanted to read a couple of passages from it to you to see what you were thinking when you brought these together. So first, Tippett Rise is a metaphor. It is an intersection where art, music, land, sky, and poetry can weave together into an algorithm which is greater than the sum of its parts. It's always been obvious to us, among others, that everything is involved in everything else. With Tip at Rise, we're hoping to provide an environment where these transfers of energy and knowledge can take place. So I wonder if you think about that algorithm that you're going for and that mix that you were going for and what was behind it then? What do you think about it now? So really behind it for me and for Peter, abstract art gave us the opportunity to open our minds and think in ways that you couldn't predict before you had the encounter. And that it allowed you to go deeply into yourself and explore freely what that might mean. One of our very first encounters of a special kind was at Storm King. That sense of being outdoors with these great works somehow, I think, opens your mind in a different way. You know, if we think about life-changing experiences that we have, I think we're able to share experiences that will be changing other people's lives. One of the many reasons I wanted to work with Tip at Rise is, I think, because as much as it's understood to be a sculpture park to some or a music venue to others, it is really a cross-disciplinary space. You have all of the arts. You actually have a pan-arts perspective in bringing poetry, the visual arts, um, the performing arts, architecture, all into shared space. You know, being, you know, on this beautiful land, you know, seeing this sky, which is so different from the sky in other places, being with the art, hearing the music, 
while seeing, you know, the sheep kind of thinking, oh, maybe this concert is for me. <laughs> uh, you know, having the chance to be together and that sense, I think, of community that artists feel when they visit Tippet Rise and feel from our audience and that sense of possibility. So many of the arts inspire. If there's an amazing pianist here, then that might inspire Peter to write a poem. And then that poem would perhaps inspire a composer to write a song, then that song might inspire a painter. So that it's the algorithm. <laughs> yes, the algorithm, that it all kind of really does happen in ways that we hoped, but were not planned. James Florio, who just a very beautiful photographer, heard about Tibet Rise when he was in Chile, then he came, and one day he apparently went home and said, I really need to move to Montana <laughs> to Tabor Rise. And so now he will go out on the land with his large format camera, and then we get to learn new things about Tippet Rise through James's eyes. There you are. And, and he's one of many stories where that's happening. Exactly. So poetry is one of the other art forms that you're getting into the mix here in this place. Maybe you could tell us a little bit more about how you think about the poetic or you think about the role of poetry here. Poetry has always been, you know, very, very important both to me and to Peter. It is this sense of metaphor, of bringing together two things that might not seem to be related to each other and then creating through an empty space an attachment. It is language that can express things that we don't say in ordinary day-to-day -day conversation, that it can create that kind of both depth and leap of experience. And it's that empty space between words and then the empty space between the land and the sculpture, between the sculpture and the sky between music and what's happening with the clouds. It's those empty spaces that both allow our visitors and our artists to leap into those spaces and create something, you know, on their own. Which is what art is supposed to do, right? <laughs> Elevating, taking us to a slightly new place, yeah. Would you be willing to share a little poetry? I would love to. I <laughs> okay. would love to share. Okay. Maybe I'll read one of Peter's poems. Thinking about today and thinking about this conversation, I wanted to read this wonderful little short poem of Peter's called Reciprocity. In nature, mimesis mimics the features of its favorite pieces, but en garde creatures, it knows how to edit, reflecting its view. If you forget it, it forgets you. So. <laughs> so efficiently phrased. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of the short, fun poem, but it has a really frightening message. Uh -huh. And I think in so many ways, you know, we have forgotten nature. And for me, Tippet Rise reminds you, wait a minute, what about this <laughs> yeah. place? And yeah. I think so many people who live in Montana have that feeling about the land. Yeah, I mean, I love that the first stanza seems to be about reminding us, which the thing that Tippett Rise reminds everybody about, which is that art is mimicking nature, <laughs> or that the things that humans are making in the world are in a mimetic relationship with nature. Uh, and at the same time, nature's bigger than us. <laughs> exactly. Nature will edit. <laughs> and if we're not responsive here, if we don't keep that reciprocal relationship going, it forgets you. I love that. And also, I just appreciate what you just said in the last, that last phrase where you said that a lot of people just get that who live here. And, and that that's part of what is really important about the local knowledge of Montanans. Well, this has been very enlightening for me and inspiring for me. I wonder now that we're th you're th here we are, Tippet Rice has gone through a number of changes. More art is up. Um, more art might be ahead. Are there, are there things that you might want to share, especially in the context of what makes this place relevant? 
maybe I would just talk about yeah. two pieces. And I think one of them is um, Marie Watt's absolutely beautiful textile wall hanging, companion species floating and held. I think of it often when I'm away from Tippet Rise. It has gone deeply into my unconsciousness. I think she brings to us that moment of the setting sun and how that illuminates the sky and yet translates it into this material that is the blanket which was so important both in her Seneca culture and in her German and Scots culture and then to kind of unfurl that and share how that domestic almost sense can then relate to the sky. It really is spectacular. The other new piece, New for Tippet Rise, a piece that Mark DeSuvro created several decades ago, Whales Cry, which is in a gorgeous valley of Tippet Rise where it's kind of a little bit tucked in. And if we think about the land of Tippet Rise, it was once an inland sea and that we have now brought the whale back to this inland sea and that the whale is crying. And doesn't that, you know, speak to really climate change, to separation that we humans have created between us and other species. You know, it occurs to me that, that what you were saying about both Marie and Mark's new pieces brings us right back to where we started with your thoughts about place and about um, all of the different layers of history and stories that this place holds that we're in danger of forgetting. And it seems in many ways both of these pieces, the way that you're seeing them and encouraging us to read them or in fact encouraging that wider worldview, geologically, land and sky, what was once sea, and to take all of that in and to feel all of those layers and a connection to that complexity every time we encounter this land and this space. So, that is Kathy, so beautiful. thank you so much for <laughs> adding your voice. I, I know you would resist me saying the voice of authority, but it is, you're such a visionary leader, uh, and it is that so much of what you and Peter might have hoped for has um, guided guided the evolution of this place again in unexpected ways, in part because you've allowed things to unfold as they needed to unfold. And I know we all look forward to seeing how they unfold for the future. Thank you. Shannon, thank you. <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> okay, we're done. Yay.